This video is a demo of one of the many tutorials you can find in the 3D coloring book, a course specifically designed to help you master Substance Painter. If you want to gain full access to this tutorial and unlock more tutorials and free assets, click the link in the description. One of 500 birds that are being judged today at the show. <laughs> uh, ah! So, you want to learn stylized PBR texturing and Substance Painter. Of course, you're already a sophisticated and intelligent person, so you've most likely enrolled into the 3D coloring book, where you have access to tons of tutorials and hundreds of pre-made assets, and you've now gone on there and downloaded yourself a cute little rooster who's waiting to be textured. But now what? This tutorial is going to take you on a strange and informative journey to show you how to create beautiful and vibrant textures on our feathered little friend here using the incredibly powerful Substance Painter. No pesky hand painting involved, just pure stylized PBR magic using creative techniques and easy foundational basics. You're going to walk away with a ton of confidence and ammunition to texture all of your future projects on your own. Now, let's get started. Due to the very fortunate lack of live roosters in my apartment, I was forced to resort to Google Images to collect ideas for how roosters actually look, because as a city boy, I have never actually thankfully seen one of these demonic hell spawns in person. One piece of advice, be very careful with your choice of words when collecting your reference images. <laughs> Now, as it turns out, roosters aren't the stinking piles of feather and garbage that I expect them to be. Roosters can be quite regal and are packed with vibrant and beautiful colors. Perfect for a person like me with too much time on my hands and a subscription to an overpriced 3D texturing software. This does seem like a great opportunity for us to practice our PBR skills in Substance Painter. So after laughing at rooster memes all night and a good portion of my morning, I had a solid collection of reference images to begin my texturing project and a fresh new outlook on life. It's time to start texturing. After you've downloaded the model from the 3D coloring book, let's open up Substance Painter and get everything set up. Now, right off the bat, you may notice that the mesh is a little off, and that's because we haven't added the opacity map to the mix yet. To get this going, import the provided opacity map into your project. Once that's done, just add a new simple layer, turn off every channel except for the opacity channel, and then drag and drop that opacity map into the opacity slot. Now your feathers should look a lot better. So keep in mind, every layer after this needs to have the opacity channel turned off. If one layer has it on, the mesh will reappear and you'll have to waste hours searching for it like I did. Don't suffer like I did. So to tackle this project, it's best to break this texture up into manageable chunks so we don't get overwhelmed. So I'd recommend starting this project by mentally breaking down the asset into individual parts. So for example, this model and in this specific tutorial, we're going to break it up into the tail feathers, the back feathers, that weird red stuff. I mean, what is that? The feet, extra colors for the wing, the eyes and the beak. Now, the last few that I mentioned are very simple, so I'm gonna spend the bulk of our time covering the meat and potatoes, the feathers. Now, I wanna start this off by saying this took me way longer than I thought it would. I spent a good portion of two days tweaking the colors just to get it perfect. So maybe that's a little pathetic, but remember, you're watching a video on YouTube teaching you how to make an imaginary rooster look pretty, so let's not be too judgmental. First things first, let's brush that Cheeto dust off your keyboard and create a folder to mask out the area we want the tail feathers to cover. Now by applying a black mask to the folder that is going to contain the texture layers for the tail feathers, we can control exactly where we want the texture to appear. I decided that to maintain a consistent style, the tail feather texture was going to be used in several other areas of the body as well, namely the chest and one of the top portions of the wing. Also, uh, because I'm lazy. So with that being said, use a combination of polygon fill, UV fill, and painting to build out the mask. If you get confused, you can always refer to the fully textured file I've provided to all 3D coloring book users as a reference. Now, once that's done, it's time to add our first fill layer and it's going to be a base layer. So choose a nice deep blue color. Turn off every channel except for the color and roughness channel and set the roughness channel all the way to one. This is what we're gonna be using for the rest of the tutorial. You now 
have a base. So this is a decent start, but it's important to make sure we have some color variation in that base to make sure that the texture doesn't fall too flat later on. So let's go ahead and add a second fill layer with only the color channel selected. And you can press the Alt click button on the channel to make sure that that is the only channel selected. From there, let's add a black mask and add a fill. This fill layer is going to drive our color variation depending on the map that we choose. Now this is where we can get creative. You don't have to follow me exactly, so pick a grunge map that you like and drag and drop it onto your fill layer. You can always change this and experiment with it later. As you can see now, the fill layer is now populating your texture with only the grunge that you have specified. Pretty cool, right? So feel free to now change the color to something slightly lighter than your original blue base. Pick something that stands out to you. i not that creative, so I just went with a slightly lighter blue. Now, once that's done, it's time to add a blur slope filter above that fill layer you just made. This is a technique I use to give it that hand brush feel, and you can also combine this with another directional blur filter as well if you want to get really crazy with it. So feel free to mess around and experiment with it. Now, since we're using non-destructive techniques, you can rotate and scale that grunge map as you please to get the position and look that you want. If the color is too overpowering, feel free to drop the opacity of that layer a bit. I ended up dropping mine all the way down to about 23% opacity. Now let's go even further with it and add a second layer of color variation. So once that's done, press Ctrl D on that layer to duplicate it. And this time let's add a different map with almost a bright green and turquoise color. This will give your texture that burst of color and vibrancy. Feel free again to experiment with this layer to see what works for you. Now, the reason I'm recommending putting some green in there is taking a look at our references, we can see that we can definitely spare some room for some more green in there. Splashes of slightly different colors will really make your textures pop, so try to implement this as much as you can. For this project, we're going to try and bring in as much greens and violets as possible to add some of that really great color variation that goes so well with stylized art. Now to continue on with that thought, let's add another green fill layer with only the color channel selected. Add a black mask and a mask editor generator. This time we're going to use the curvature information of this model to add some more color variation. Now once the generator is applied, pop open the curvature settings in there and tweak them until you get a look that you're satisfied with. Again, you can use the 3D coloring book as a reference to see how I set mine up. Ideally, I tried to set up the green so that it's only really messing with the feathers closest to the body of the rooster. Now, you can also add another blur slope filter if you're feeling artsy and you want to add some more of that hand brushed look. Okay, now for the fun part. Let's add some highlights to this texture to really sell that hand painted vibe. We really want to make sure this looks like it was drawn by hand, so let's create another fill layer and add a black mask and again let's add another mask editor generator. So now here's the trick. In the curvature settings drop down, make sure that everything is completely turned off except for the fine and the sharp settings. Pull those bad boys all the way to one. This way only the micro details are getting picked up and only the edges and small details will become highlighted. Now choose a nice light blue color as the highlight and then feel free to take a second to look back and appreciate how good you've become at texturing useless farm animals. Now that we've created a nice, vibrant base layer and texture, let's start adding some depth to this. Now you can do this in a few ways, but a simple dark violet fill layer with a curvature generator will do just the trick. Mess with the larger curvature settings to get the violet to fill in the darker parts of the texture. You could also, if you wanted, try this with ambient occlusion generators as well, whatever floats your boat. Now, you may have noticed this doesn't really look a lot like the final result, and that's because we still have one final layer to add with my favorite filter, and one of the main tricks everyone should know when using Substance Painter, and that's adding your baked lighting to the texture. Now, this is an extremely powerful filter that will simulate lighting information right onto your albedo texture, 
adding some beautiful color variation and depth. I highly recommend trying to use this on every single asset you work with in the future. And the more you practice with it, the better you will get. You will thank me later. So to do this, just create a new fill layer with only the color channel selected. And instead of adding a black mask this time, just right click and add a filter. You can now select the baked stylized lighting filter and add it to your layer. Then make sure to switch your blending mode to soft light. And just like that in a few layers, we've now got a pretty fantastic looking texture. So if you've made it this far, give yourself a huge pat on the back and you've already made a beautiful PBR texture with basically a small amount of effort. But we have a long way to go to turn this regal rooster into the bell of the ball. Now, if you're ready to finish this model up, learn a few weird facts about roosters and learn a few more tricks and secrets of Substance Painter along the way, let's get going.